Can we begin? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, I'll just introduce you. Give me a minute, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, everybody. Pranams from Mayapur Institute. And on behalf of the students, we welcome His Holiness Bhakti Vigya Vinash Nashinga Maharaj. He'll be teaching Unit 3 and Unit 4. And as you all know about Maharaj, I'll not say anything further. Maharaj is a great soul and it is our blessings and mercy that we have got the association of Maharaj. So I'll just leave it to Maharaj. To we welcome you once again, Maharaj Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Padmasundari Madhaji. Very happy to be with you all. Very happy to have the opportunity to take part in this Bhakti Vaibhav program. Okay, so I'll begin. I'll just offer some prayers. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militanye Na Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakalpata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So very glad to be with you all for this Unit 3 and ho hopefully also we'll be with you for Unit 4 also. So Unit 3. Uh, can we have the, the first slide, Padma Sundari Maharaji? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we're going to be looking at these wonderful chapters. Chapter 8, Prayers of Queen Kunti. Chapter 9, Passing Away of Bhisma Dev. Before that, today, we're on Chapter 7. Go ahead. Padmasundari, next slide, yeah. Okay, a little overview of Unit 3. Chapter 7, the son of Drona punished. You've already covered part of Chapter 7, right? I guess with the two Krishna Prabhu, you covered the meditation of Vyasa Dev and the Atmarama Sloka very important part of Srimad Bhagavatam. And after that, after the speaking of that Marama Sloka and the, you know, glorification of uh, Sugadeva Goswami, uh, we're going to hear about the Pandavas. Maharaj, give me a minute because I, I have some issues here in Zoom. Can you just give me a minute, Maharaj? Yes. Yeah, because I want to record in Zoom and I... Okay. Yes, Maharaj. All right, so you covered part, I think, the first 12 verses of Chapter 7. And we'll be completing chapter 7 today and we also try to go into the first few verses of chapter 8 if, we, if time allows. 
that's uh, the plan. So chapter 8, very famous chapter, Prabhupada gave many lectures on prayers of Queen Kunti and they're published also. We have the book on the prayers of Queen Kunti, wonderful prayers. So we'll be covering that chapter in the next class and, and we'll hear also about Parikshit having to be saved again. And then chapter 9, yeah, Padma Sundari, yeah. Chapter 9, the departure of Bhishma Dev in the presence of Lord Krishna. So we'll see the theme of the first canto is the disappearance of so many great personalities from the world. Grandfather Bhishma leaving the world, and then after that, then we have uh, the Pandavas retire timely. Well, you have, before that you have the departure of Lord Krishna, you have the, the annihilation of the Yadu dynasty, the departure of Lord Krishna, and then uh, the Pandavas retire timely. And in this way the scene is set for the appearance of Sukadeva Goswami. So that's basically what's going on in the first canto. Right? So the first lesson today we're going to be hearing about the son of Drona punished. The son of Drona of course, Ashwatam, the infamous Ashwatam. And how he acted and what happened to him, how he got punished. Can we go ahead? Yeah? So, just to refresh your memory, you've already covered chapter 4, of course, some time ago. In the beginning of chapter 4, you have Sona Karishi putting questions to Sutta Goswami. In the very first chapter of the first canto, we had the sages in Naimashiranya, you had the same thing, you had Sona Karishi putting questions to Sutta Goswami. So in the fourth chapter, more questions were given to him. And these questions were more in relation to uh, Srila Vyasadeva and how did he shown here, where did he get the inspiration to write the Srimad Bhagavatam or to compile the Srimad Bhagavatam? Because he'd already written 18 Puranas and Mahabharata and everything. So what was it that happened? What, trans what happened that he was so inspired to compile the Srimad Bhagavatam? So Sonakarishi will also glorify Sukadeva Goswami and Maharaj Pariksha. He will describe he described their wonderful qualities. Sukadeva Goswami and Maharaj Pariksha, quite contrasting personalities. They really don't have much in common with each other except for one thing. Right? One thing which they have in common. They're both devotees of Lord Krishna and that's a very important thing. Otherwise there was really nothing in common. Sukadeva Goswami, the son of Vyas, a totally detached person, very uh, renounced and no interest in material life. Maharaj Parikshit, he'd been the emperor of the world and coming from the royal family. So they had very different backgrounds, but the one thing they had in common was that they were both wonderful devotees of Lord Krishna. And then Shona Karishi wants to understand why would Maharaj Parikshit give up everything? That he had so much and he was doing so well. He was a good king. He was doing really nicely, ruling the world. So why did he have to give up everything and go and sit on the banks of the Ganges? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> right, all right. So here's another 
coming into now chapter 7 and text number 12 where we want to begin our discussion today right so uh, would someone like to read this for me Sutta Goswami thus addressed the rishis headed by Shonaka. <clears throat> now I shall begin the transcendental narration of the Lord Sri Krishna and topics of the birth, activities, and deliverance of King Pariksha, the sage amongst kings, as well as topics of the renunciation of the worldly order by the sons of Pandu. All right, so Sutta Goswami is... He said, now I'm going to begin, we're already in chapter 7, he said, now I'm going to begin the narration of Lord Krishna. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we had to wait some time, but it's well worth it. We're going to hear about Lord Krishna. And the first six chapters were describing so many preliminary things, right? We had Vyasadev and his instruction from Narada Muni, of course, that was there. And you had also the sages putting questions to so Sonika. They wanted to know what was the essence of all the scriptures. And so the second chapter of the first canto, very nice, important. But now we're going to hear about Lord Krishna. We're going, this is, of course, not immediately. First we're going to hear Oh, Lord Krishna is also going to be there, but it, we're going to hear about uh, particularly the sons of Pandu, Arjuna, and how he deals with the situation, how he is tested by Lord Krishna. Okay, we'll go ahead. So, first section, chapter 7, beginning text number 12, beginning with this uh, description of the pastimes of Lord Krishna and the Pandavas. This, of course, is taking place after the battle of Kurukshetra. The battle of Kurukshetra is over and Bhim has also uh, practically killed Duryodhan, broke the spine of Duryodhan, Duryodhan is laying, dying. And then what happens next? We're told that Ashwatthama, Ashwatthama enters into the camp of the Pandava princes and he kills the five sons of Draupadi, the five sleeping Pandava princes. We're not told exactly how old they are. Does anybody happen to know how old are these princes they're young children anyway because they're the chi they're always described the children of Draupadi and uh, Ashwatthama is guilty of killing children and killing them in their sleep not a very glorious way for a Kshatriya or Ash Ashwatthama He's not a Kshatriya, he's meant, meant to be a Brahmana. As the son of Drona, his father would expect him to be the Brahmana, but he did not live up to the expectations. All right, so first of all we hear about Ashwatthama killing the five sleeping sons of the Pandavas. And after killing them, then he runs, he flees, he has to get out of there because Arjuna is coming after him. Mataji, it would help if you didn't put everything there, you know, you, you put the whole thing in there, you know. If we could go them one at a time, it would be better for me, all right? Go, no, go on, go on, Chap we're on chapter 7, right? Okay, so we got the sleeping sons of Pandavas, and they, okay, now stop there, right? So Aswatthama flees 
and Arjuna sets out to capture him. In the Bhagavatam it's described Aswatthama fleeing, that he he's like Brahma running away from Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva was ready to kill Brahma, Lord Brahma, because Lord Brahma had become lusty after his own daughter. Now Lord Shiva was disgusted, he was going to kill him. And Brahma had, he ran. So the same way Ashwatthama runs for his life, because Arjuna is out to capture him. Right? He's promised Draupadi, I will bring him back and you can take bath standing on his head. You know. Yeah, Kshatriyas, they speak like that. They speak very boldly. Uh, go ahead, one more. Next we hear, Ashwatthama's in danger for his life. So, he realizes he, in order to save his life, he, he will use this weapon, the Brahmastra weapon. And he releases his Brahmastra weapon. The Brahmastra weapon, released by mantra, subtle device. Uh, when Prabhupada speaks about this Brahmastra weapon, he often talks about how at the time of initiation, devotees also recite a mantra. And Prabhupada quotes that, uh, that he quotes that verse, uh, what is it? it goes, uh, this verse about seeing Lord Krishna within and without, purified or unpurified, one who remembers Krishna, then he will attain the spiritual world. Uh, how does it go, that verse? Uh, remember at the time of initiation, we always... Uh, no, that's not the verse I'm thinking of. Uh, oh yes it is, you're right, yeah, right, you're right actually. Om pavitra pavitra va sarva vastam gatopiya yasmarit pundarikaksha, pundarikaksha, right, pundarikaksha. One who remembers the lotus eye Lord, purified or unpurified, then his life is successful. Right, thank you Prabhu. Om pavitra pavitra va Sarva vastam gatopisya yasmarit pundarikaksham svaibhayantara suchi Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu. So Prabhupada was quoting that mantra a couple of times when he was talking about the Brahmastra weapon. He said, just like we are chanting mantras, he said, it, it should not be a ritual. He said, it's not just a ritual. He said, it is a subtle science, and by reciting the mantras, we can actually awaken the spiritual energy. So, Ashwatthama, he was able to use this Brahmastra weapon. But, of course, as you probably know, he has a problem, right? What is his problem? He knows how to release it, but... Janmastami will he tell. He doesn't know how to retract it. Right, he doesn't know how to retract it. He's, uh, one who is able to release the weapon should also know how to retract it. So Ashwatthama, somehow he only knew how to release it, and he didn't know how to retract it. Interesting, you know, in the battle of Kurukshetra, we had, you know, Abhimanu, his, his death was brought about because he only knew how to enter into the chakra. He didn't know how to get out of the chakra. And so he ended up being killed in the, in the, in the chakra. And so similarly, Ashwatthama, the son of Drona, he'd only learned how to re release the Brahmastra, but he didn't know how to retract it. Mm. 
So Ashwatthama releases his Brahmastra weapon. Uh, Burijan Prabhu writes in his book, Unveiling the Lotus Feet, that when the Brahmastra weapon is released, then the person who it's directed for, he knows about it. He's aware that that weapon is coming for him. So Arjuna was aware that this Brahmastra weapon is coming towards him. So what does Arjuna do? What maybe one of the ladies who are there can respond and tell us, how does Arjuna react when he, he understands the Brahmastra weapon is coming towards him? He releases another Brahmastra. He releases another Brahmastra. Hmm. What does he do before that? He starts to pray to Krishna. Yes, right. That's important that seeing the Brahmastra come towards him, one will certainly be somewhat fearful. So when we're in fear, when we have some great fear, then devotees, we should all learn to take shelter of Lord Krishna. And we approach Lord Krishna for protection. But in approaching Lord Krishna for protection, Arjuna doesn't just simply call out to Krishna, Oh Krishna, this Brahmastra weapon's coming, save me. No. What does he do first of all? He offers prayers. He offers heartfelt prayers to Lord Krishna. He has to glorify Krishna. He wants to appreciate Lord Krishna. So this is a very important part of the process of taking shelter of Lord Krishna, that we also have to pray to the Lord for his protection and to make us fearless. So Arjuna offered beautiful prayers to Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna then gave him the instruction that you also release a Brahmastra. Lord Krishna, of course, is omniscient. He knows that Ashwatthama doesn't know how to retract the weapon. So because he doesn't know how to retract the weapon, something it has to hit something, it has to destroy something. So Arjuna releases his Brahmastra weapon to counteract Ashwatthamas. And then what happens? Chandrika Maharaji, do you know what happens? I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, then we'll ask... Um, I'm not able to see. What about Rasa Shekhar Prabhu? You can tell us what happens? after Arjuna re releases his Brahmastra weapon? Krishna uh, it uh, set like a Samantha fire, fire at the bus station. All the universe, all the entities will be uh, just uh, fired. Yeah, they'll feel the heat, right? The two, the two Brahmastra weapons uh, interact with each other. There's a big explosion. And the, the whole universe is affected. They all feel the heat. The higher planets, the lower planets, the earth planets, they can all feel the result of the explosion of the interaction of the two Brahmastra weapons. Where's that told? Um, I'm, I'm not sure actually. I think but I, I, we don't I, see that in the Bhagavatam. It may be some other in some other place, but it's not mentioned in our Bhagavatam. Then I'm sorry. I, I just. Hmm. Anyway, okay. So. Ashwatthama 
his attempt to destroy Arjuna has failed and Arjuna has counteracted the Brahmastra weapon of Ashwatthama and then the next thing that happens is Mahavirya Prabhu you can tell us what happens next Okay. We will ask somebody else. Yes. Come along, in Mataji. Come along, in Mataji. No. Anybody? Anybody know? What happens next after the two Brahmastras interact? Anyone else? I know I know Jan Mastami knows for sure, but I'd like to hear from some other people. Arjuna arrested uh, Ashwatthama. Yes, thank you. Yes, Arjuna arrests Ashwatthama. And how does he arrest him? What what manner does he arrest him? Yes, binding him up like an animal, not in a very courteous manner, not in a very respectful manner. Now why would we expect Arjuna to be more courteous to Ashwatthama? What is their relationship? Yes, right. The, the son of Arjuna's, Arjuna's martial arts guru, right? Drona had trained Arjuna in the military arts. So Arjuna was very much indebted to the teachings of Drona. It's even mentioned at the beginning of the battle of the Kurukshetra war, how Arjuna saluted Drona. Although they were fighting on the opposite sides, but still Arjuna saluted Drona because he, he recognized Drona as his guru. But this Ashwatthama has acted in a very, very deplorable manner by killing the five sleeping sons of the Pandavas. So Arjuna arrests Ashwatthama, binds him up like an animal and brings him. Who does he bring him to? Draupadi. Yes, right. Because her sons have been killed. So she must, you, we would expect the Draupadi is feeling some bitterness. It's a very, very bitter. That this man has come and killed my five sons in their sleep. All right. Uh, can we go ahead, Padma Sundari Maharaji? Next one. Okay, we had Arjuna praise to Krishna. Go ahead. Oh, okay, this is Arjuna's prayer to Krishna. Right? We can just read it. Right? Maybe somebody would like to read for us. Who's. Arjuna said, O oh my Lord Sri Krishna, you are the almighty personality of Godhead. There is no limit to your different energies. Therefore, only you are competent to instill fearlessness in the hearts of your devotees. Everyone in the flames of material mysteries can find the path of liberation in you only. Mm. All right. So Arjuna appreciating the energies of Lord Krishna. 
ultimately everything is Krishna's energy. And the, all of us, all of us living entities, we are also Krishna's energy. And so Krishna has so many different energies, and if we want to become fearless, we have to take shelter of Krishna. We have to learn to bring the mind to think of Krishna and to surrender to Krishna. So Arjuna was showing us the proper manner in a challenging situation where a life is a life-threatening situation, the proper manner is to pray to the Lord, offer prayers of glorification. And then he requested Lord Krishna that what to do, this Brahmastra is coming towards me. How should we deal with it? And Lord Krishna gives a solution. He tells Arjuna, you also release your Brahmastra, you counteract it. Because Ashwatthama doesn't know how to do it. All right, can we go ahead? Yes? Oh, thank you. Okay. So Arjuna releases his Brahmastra and then retracts them both. That's significant that Arjuna could retract both of them. The significance being that Arjuna is empowered as a representative of the Lord. He has the power to be able to bring both the Brahmastras under control. Because Arjuna is the devotee of Lord Krishna. So he's empowered by Lord Krishna. The power to do anything comes from Krishna. Just like we want to distribute the holy name. Chaitanya Charitamrita says, one who has uh, got the Krishna Shakti, then he can distribute the holy name. Hmm? Kali Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vininahi Tara Pravartan. That we have to have the, the potency of Lord Krishna. So Arjuna was blessed that he offered his prayers and he was empowered by Lord Krishna. And in this way he could bring both the Brahmastra weapons under his control. Go ahead. Yes. So Arjuna's captured Ashwatthama, binds him up as an animal and places him at the feet of Draupadi. And how does Draupadi react? How will you act, Chandrika Maharaji? If five of your sons are killed in the sleep and they, then they bring the person who killed them and places them at your feet, how will you respond? Probably Hare Krishna Maharaj probably I will be and I will want to kill him on the same place. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that would be a, a fairly reasonable reaction for most of us. Hmm. But how does Draupadi react? What is her feeling? She respect, respect him like a Brahmana? Yes, right. She, res, she has respect for him because he is the son of the Guru and he's you know, coming in that family. Good family, family of their guru. So she's got some affection. She feels that this is not right, Arjuna. And does everyone agree with Draupadi? Yadu Gopal, 
Oh, Vira Gopal Prabhu. My pronouns, uh, Maharaj, so nice to hear your voice and your darshan. Mm, Maharaj, I personally, because I'm so stupid, I suppose, I, I disagree with um, Draupadi. First of all, by um, just not agreeing with her husband's actions, Arjuna was, first she desired, uh, and then Arjuna brings him to her, and now she's disrespecting for me, Arjuna. Hmm. But Sorry. what about the people present there? How do they feel? Who's all there along with Draupadi? Yes. <laughs> do you remember who's there? Yes, all the all the elders are there. The uh, the brothers are there, and uh, I I believe uh, no, I don't remember actually, Mark. That's all I know. The, only the brothers. No. Are there. Yeah, the brothers are there, and 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 who else is there? Yes, Lord Krishna is there himself, right? Lord Krishna is there, and the brothers are there, and Draupadi is there. So, Dauji Prabhu, Dauji Prabhu, how how do the brothers feel? Do they all agree with Draupadi? Dauji Prabhu, are you there? Hare Krishna Maharaj, sorry, it took a while to unmute. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, sorry Maharaj, I, I have not read that section yet. Okay. Okay, we will ask Mahamani. Mahamani and Mad... Is it Mahamani? Yes, Maharaj. Now, um, um. Abhima was present and are you asking about who is present? Yeah, well, we heard all the brothers are present, and Lord Krishna is present, and Draupadi is present. So I want to know, how do they all feel? Draupadi had said, she thought, you know, this is not right, he's a brahmana, we should treat him more respectfully. Bhima wanted to kill him? Yeah, right. Bhima wants to kill him. Krishna wanted to kill him too, but at the same time, yeah, he wanted to also please uh, see Pati as well. He wanted to what? Krishna wanted to kill him, kill Ashwatthama. At the same time, he doesn't want to kill, like, um, he give an equal um, instruction. Yes, Krishna said, Krishna, in, he also agreed with Draupadi that he's the son of a Brahmana. The, Brahm, son, the son of a Brahmana, you cannot, cannot be killed, shouldn't be killed. But he also wanted, he thought, you know, he's done so many terrible things, right? Okay, go ahead. Padmas yes, Arjuna captures and binds Ashwatthama. Next one. Okay, discussion. Whether Ashwatthama should be killed or not. So this is a discussion. Should he be killed? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. This you Can I speak? Yes, please. Maharaj actually... Uh... Krishna gives the equivocal instruction. Krishna doesn't want Ashwatthama to be killed, but he wants Arjuna to uh, humiliate him also. So he tells uh, he tells uh, uh, Arjuna that uh, you uh, to remove the money on the top of his forehead. In that way, it's like similar to uh, humiliating him also, but uh, like insulting him and not by not killing him also. So he removes the Arjuna removes the money which is present on the forehead of Ashwatthama. Well, you jumped the gun a, quite a bit. You came to the, the conclusion of the whole thing, right? 
we, we, we got to hear a little bit more about, you know, the pros and the cons. Should he be killed or should he not? Right? There's, there's some, this is a discussion. Right? Bhima wanted him to be killed, but Draupadi did not want to be killed. He did not want it. And the Dharma Shastra says that he should not be killed. Artha Shastra says that he has to be killed. All right, what you have to do, we want, let's make some little groups. Padmasundari Madhiji, how many people have we got in the class? Padmas, Padmasundari? We have 24. 24. Okay, so that's uh, six groups of four. And we want, we want each group to come up with the, re the reasons why he should be killed and why he shouldn't be killed. How much time, Maharaj? Well, he shouldn't need a lot of time. Uh, yeah, because if you open the rooms, they'll join the rooms, so we have to tell them the time. Uh-huh. Okay, five minutes. Please join the rooms. Hare Krishna, can I ask a question? Yes. Is, is this about our opinion or what is in the, uh, said in the Bhagavatam? What's in the Bhagavatam? It's in the Bhagavatam. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, can you reiterate the question? I'll broadcast it. Yeah, the question is... What are the argument, what are the reasons why Arjuna should be killed and what are the reasons why he should not be killed? Which verses to which verse we have to Right. What you have to do, make a list of them, write down the different reasons. Just note them down. Huh? Who will write it down? Well, somebody in the group, one person in the group can write them down so that when we ask you, when we come out around, we can ask you how many reasons do you have and what are the reasons. Yeah, we want, we want both sides. We want reasons for killing and reasons for not killing. Yes, Maharaj. So, the reason for killing is that uh, he has killed innocent dog boys. This is very easy. Yeah, Mr. Krasnitz, innocent people, women, those who are sleeping, 
those who are not well cannot be killed. The second reason. Okay, Padma Sundari Maharaji. He does not know the, the principles of religion. We, we are discussing uh, against killing or for killing? For against killing. Okay. Both realistic. Both realistic. The first one is against killing, right? The first one we are discussing for against killing. Parmasundari? Well, they are all discussing. If you want, you can join each and every breakout room. Okay. Can you? Oh, how do I join? You have to just go in. There are breakout rooms. Then you can just join. You have you have been into room one. Yes. So you can go okay, breakout room. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Room two, you can join. Like okay. That you can join, and then you can come out. Leave, leave the room. Just leave the breakout room, and then or you can just press join to another breakout. Room. So when I want to go into room two, do I just press room two? You have to, there is a, there is a key, join, you can just join there. It just gives a number there. If you just go there, you take your key cursor there, it will show you to join. I, I don't know where this is. Where, where is the key cursor? No, no, you, you take your mouse there, into, in, on top of the number, then it will say to join. First of all, where they get the numbers? The breakout room. I go in the breakout rooms. Yeah, you have room two, right? Well, I want to go into room two. Yeah, you just go there and press Maharaj. You can go into the room. <laughs> I'm asking you, how do I go in? <laughs> you have to go, go into the top of room two and press there. I don't know if it let me in or not. One minute. I'm sharing my screen, Maharaj. You can see. Uh-oh. I think they're coming out because the time is over. Well, five minutes is about up. Maybe we need to go on. Because one group is coming out. I need to answer. Can you put me back in my group? Which Sorry, group? I, group you are in? I was in three. Okay, please join group. Thanks. Maharaj, right, you can see my screen now? Yes. You can see if I move my cursor there, if I just move there, I can just press there and you can join. If I take on top of the number, it will show join or else it will show nothing. I take on top of the number, I can join. No, I, I don't know where you are. I'm, I've, I don't know. I don't see anywhere. I, there's, a, there's nothing really on this screen that says Mayapur Institute. I've got something asking me. said the Mac can't connect to iCloud. I don't know. What is this? Okay, one second. You're not getting the screen at all? There's a, there's the lotus feet. Oh. Um, I think I think uh, next time I'll send my husband with you to come there near you so that you will know how to join the room. Okay. I think that will be better. I, I'll ask him to post from there. Okay. The next the Saturday class I will ask him to come there to MI and be with you so that it will be easy for you. Uh, yeah, if somebody just shows me one time, I'll know it. I just, I don't know right away. I'm not able to see what I'm supposed to do. Go to breakout rooms. Yeah, and then you have to go into, you can go into each and every room, right? Because Yeah, but I want to know how I go into the room. No, you have to go there and press. But how do I get in? If you press, you'll go inside. You just press, there's, there's, a, there's a chart with the breakout rooms in progress. It said room one, room two, and the names of the people. Yeah, you just have to go to that, it says room one, room two, right? Yeah. You go on to room one, and it shows the number there. 
four or five like that, which is showing, right? Yeah. You have to just go on top of the number and press. You will go into the room. On top of the number. Yes. No. Is there? You will go into the room. The top of the room number or what number? No, it says room one, and then it says five. Room two, it says four. Right. So what? Well, yeah, press room two. I press room two. And then you just go and press that four. Oh, pr press the four. Oh, okay, now I've got it. Okay, yeah, okay, join room two, yes. Okay, got it. Okay, what are the reasons for that? Have you got some reasons now? How are you doing in room two? Are you, have you come up with some different items? Yeah, yes, my yes. Yes? It's quite an easy exercise, right? How many reasons have you got? Well, uh, how many? Just tell five. me how many. Five? Uh, for, for not killing or for killing? For not killing. For not killing, right? For not killing. That is uh, three reasons. Only three? Yes. Okay, and how many reasons he got for killing? Okay, good. Hi. All right. Okay, let's. Okay, it's good. Okay, so good. I'm going to leave, and we're going to come out now. You can come out the room, and we'll discuss it together. Let's see what everybody else has got. Oh. You seem, likewise, you can join. You have muted yourself. Oh, likewise, I... you can join the same like room three, room four, room five. You Okay, no time now. Let's bring everybody out the room and let's take feedback. Okay, I'm going to close the rooms then. In 48 seconds, everybody will be back, Maharaj. I'll just let you know when everybody Okay, joins. yeah. And can we share the screen and we'll go on the slideshow? Yes, for sure. Let everybody join, then I will share the screen. Okay. All right. Welcome yeah. back, everybody. Okay, go ahead. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, uh, like by, uh, I mean, Ashwadhamma and Draupadi, they were, uh, they didn't want Ashwad, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yudhishthira and Draupadi didn't want Ashwadhamma to be killed. And the reasons for that are, first of all, Draupadi, because of her, uh, she's a woman and she had, she had a very good nature. So that's why uh, she didn't want uh, to, uh, Ashwadhamma to be killed. Second is that he's teacher's son. Uh, that's why. And she didn't want uh, Ashwadhamma uh, as he's a son of uh, Dronachari to kill him because Dronachari was see present in the form of ashwadhamma that way he didn't want uh, ashwadhamma to kill okay and uh, and why uh, uh, i mean bhima and lord krishna wanted uh, uh, ashwadhamma to kill why because that he first of all killed innocent sons him a uh, and uh, as he act, didn't act like a brahman so you're group number two, yeah? This is group number two. Yes. Yes. Yes, Okay. So thank you. Yes. And a person who. 
Yeah. 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 Y
Very good. Group number five. I'm sorry, I'm, it's not very clear. Could you say it again? Beam supported the, to kill the Ashutama. Beam. Yeah, Beam, he wants to kill him. He's in favor of killing him. Yes, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. But why? Why did Beam want to kill him? Because uh, uh, in the... Uh, uh, when Draupadi uh, uh, was about naked in the assembly, uh, him uh, promised like that. Yeah, he made a promise. Yeah. All right, group number six, any other reasons? We have, uh, similar to the last reason, Maharaj, um, specifically, Bhima wanted him killed because he mercilessly killed sleeping children for no purpose. Yes. He should be killed. For no, for no, a legitimate reason, he killed yeah. innocent children. Defenseless uh, sleeping children, so uh, he should be killed. All right. Okay, Padma Sundari, can we go ahead? Let's see what reasons we have here listed. Arjuna promised to befriend, to behead the aggressor. So that was mentioned, yes. And then, oh, can we do it one at a time, Padma Sundari? Is that all one item? No, Padma Sundari. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Why don't you solve one item together? Well, the last one wasn't. You, you put the last one in. You know. <laughs> Can we go back? It's all one item together. That's why it's all coming together. Okay, go back again. Let me have it again. Let's have it again. Okay, stop here. Right? Krishna orders him to be killed. Krishna ordered him to be killed. Why? First of all, innocent boys in their sleep. All right? Every, I think you all had that one. And then, for his own well-being, otherwise he will go down by his own actions. I think some of you had that one. For his own well-being, for his own benefit, if the murderer is not killed, then he will suffer so much in the next life. But if, he's, if the murderer is given capital punishment, then next life he will have a much better birth. And we see Ashwatthama, it's mentioned that Ashwatthama, that at the end of the Kali Yuga, he has a very good situation. He becomes one of the great sages. All right, and then another reason Krishna gives, that he's an assassin and murderer of his own of our of the family members of the Pandavas. All right, and then the last one, Padma Sundari. Bhima also advised killing him. Yeah, Bhima wants him killed. He's because he's understood. Bhima just thinks he's done such a terrible thing. Bhima's son also was killed. Bhima had a son by Draupadi. He was also killed. So Bhima really wants him killed. He wants to see some action taken against him. All right, so these are the, some arguments for executing Ashwatthama. Go ahead. And now the arguments against that. Can we hear group six? What's one reason why, we sh why Ashwatthama should not be killed? Group six. Because he's uh, the son of a Brahmana. He's the son of a Brahmana, yes. Brahmana shouldn't be killed. Yeah. Group five, one reason. Uh, because uh, uh, 
all his brothers, they were in the fellow of not killing the Chitha. Like Yudhishthira and Nakula, they were not in favor to kill Chitha. All his brothers, they were not in favor of killing the Chitha. Why? Why were they not in favor of killing him? Because Draupadi says that he should not be killed. We make a pure devotee of the Lord. She said that being the son of your master, from where you have learned the military art. All right. Okay. This is one reason because she given military art. She's the son of the teacher. Okay, group four. Yes, Maharaj. Um, Dropati says that um, enraging the Brahmana order would cause um, the, the it would burn the body of the royal family and bring bring grief upon all. So, so the, the argument is not to enrage the Brahmana order. Not to enrage the Brahmana order, okay. Because he's a, from the Brahmana family, though they don't want to do anything against the Brahmanas. Group 3. Very good, yes, that's a good reason that, yes, that she didn't like to see Drona's wife who was the mother of Ashwatthama, she didn't want to see her suffer like Draupadi's suffering. So that was a good reason, yes. Group number three. Oh, sorry, thank you. Group two. Ashwatthama is representing uh, Dronacharya because Dronacharya is no more. Uh, killing Ashwatthama is like killing Dronacharya. Dharma. All right, yes. He's a representative of Dronacharya, re representative of the Guru, so he shouldn't be killed. And group one. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, if the kindly, uh, kingly ag administrative order being unrestricted in sense control opens the Brahmana order and enrages them. All right, enrages the Brahmanas. Yeah, we had that actually, that came up. All right, let's see what we've got here, Padmasundari Maharaji. First of all, in the absence of Dronacharya, his son was his representative, right? We had that mentioned. Next one. Do not make the wife of Dronacharya cry like me. We had that also. Creepy, the mother of Dron Ashwatthama shouldn't cry like Draupadi. And then, offence to the Brahminical order. Yes, we had this one. You got this one? Yes. Indebted to the family of Dronacharya. Yes, you also got that one. The son of a great teacher should be spared. Yes, we had that. Devotees are never unkind to others, even to the enemy. You didn't get that one, right? This one you didn't get. That the devotees are never unkind to others, even to the enemy. And Prabhupada mentions in the purport that that was a sign of Draupadi's pure devotion that she didn't even have bad feelings towards the enemy. All right, is there another one, Padmasundari? Yes. The ruling is an aggressor, when he is without weapons or chariot, cannot be killed. So, Ashwatthama, <laughs> he has no weapon or chariot. So, 
He cannot really be killed. He's bound up, helpless. All right, so these are the arguments against killing. We'll go ahead. Next slide. So how to deal with this? Ar Arjuna has to kill and not to kill, right? Someone can read? A compromise was selected by Arjuna by his sharp intelligence and he separated the jewel from the head of Vasudhama. This was as good as cutting off his head and yet his life was saved for all practical purposes. Thus being insulted, the humiliated Aswatthama was simultaneously killed and not killed by the intelligence of Lord Krishna and Arjuna. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Next slide. Yes. Someone can read? Lord Sri Krishna encouraged Arjuna outwardly just to test Arjuna's sense of duty. Krishna put to test put to test many of his pure devotees just to magnify the sense of duty. The gopis were put to such tests as well. But Maharaj also was put to set to test. All pure devotees come out successful in the respective tests. Okay, so all tests. Prabhupada talks about the tests. Krishna makes tests for his pure devotees. And he gives the examples. Prahlad Maharaj, the gopis. How were the gopis tested? Somebody can answer. Janmashtami. Well, um, they... Um... Uh, Krishna left Vrindavan <laughs> and so they were uh, serving in separation Vipra Lamba Bhav and that was it really intensified their love and devotion for Krishna by the separation okay yeah Krishna left increased their ecstasy right mm -hmm. and then what about Prahlad? How was Prahlad tested? Amala Manjari Maharaj, do you know that? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj was also put to test? Yes Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj was put to test by, uh, because Hiranyakashipu was trying to kill him. His own father was trying to kill him in different ways. Okay, yeah. Was, was Srila Prabhupada tested? Marari Prabhu? Marari? Was Prabhupada put to test? Maharaj, when uh, uh, he was to, trying to go to America, he was also even having an uh, infarct in the um, road of Java, Java Dutta. So was it was it a test? What was it? How was it a test? Yes, Krishna shows himself to him at the at the time, and he increased his faith that he shall go there and preach. Okay. Yeah. Krishna makes tests for his devotees. We see, uh, in, we see in, in the Bhagavatam third canto, Dhruva Maharaj going to the forest. Narada Muni comes to Dhruva Maharaj and tells him, Oh, you're very small. Come back when you're grown up. You're, too, you're not ready yet. You're just too young and too dangerous here. It's like a test. He wants to see, is Dhruva really determined 
Is he really Dhruva? Hmm. No, we get we also have to expect tests to come. And so Arjuna is put to test here. Arjuna is put to test how to apply this how to apply himself in this situation. How to kill Ashwatthama and at the same time not kill him. So by cutting the jewel off his head, what happens? Anybody know? Ashwatthama was deprived of his wealth and uh, also his residence. By cutting the jewel off his head, he was deprived of his wealth and his residence. Anything else? He must leave the kingdom. Yeah, he's driven out of the kingdom. Nobody wants him anymore because he's done such a terrible thing. It's described, and you see, Ashwatthama is also one of the Amaras, that he doesn't die. So it, it d describes that for 3,000 years he would wander in wastelands where and nobody will ever speak to him and his body will have a terrible smell. Nobody will come near him. For 3,000 years he will have to punish, be punished like this. And by cutting the jewel off his head he had also lost all of his effulgence. Of course, by his, by his very sinful activity, he'd also lost a lot of his effulgence and all of his spiritual power and strength, his, his great power and strength was all di diminished, it was all taken from him by cutting that jewel off his head. So it was a great punishment, but after many years, he will remain in this world through the Kali Yuga and when it comes to Satya Yuga then he has some purpose again, he's given some duty, becomes one of the great sages. So, it's all pastime. Okay, we'll go ahead. Oh, an interesting section from a purport by Srila Prabhupada. Women as a class are no better than boys and therefore they have no discriminatory power like that of a man. So of course this is in relation to, to who? Draupadi. Yes, in relation to Mother Draupadi. That because she was showing, what was, what was Draupadi, uh, she was showing this affection towards Ashwatthama. She didn't want that he should be abused, that she didn't think it was right that he was bound up and treated like an animal. And so Prabhupada picks up on this point that women as a class sometimes have this uh, problem, that they're not, they don't have the discriminatory power like that of a man. Women tend to be more soft-hearted. So how could this statement be misinterpreted? Maybe you can sit in pairs, take a partner and discuss for a few minutes. She'll divide us up into pairs. Can you? Can you? Yeah, I will divide into pairs. Yeah, thank you, Padmasuni. Somebody is in Hawaii, be smart. Or just 
this. Sorry. Hare Krishna Mataji, it's Prata Purudha and Gundicha on the, we have a problem with the internet on our PC, sorry for that. Maharaj, I have allocated, can I open the rooms? Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, who's in room 12? Nobody. Maharaj, as a co-host, it will give you a room. That's why in your room nobody is there. You can join any room if you wish, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Maharaj, you're muted, so I don't hear what you're saying. Okay, so, yeah, all right, I'll go into some rooms. Forty-two, right? Ah, uh, yes, forty-two. Hare Krishna, Ma. Andavatanam. Hare Krishna. Tejasvini. Sorry, I joined late. Oh, Was really? Busy today. <laughs> Are you familiar now? Sorry, What's... I joined late. Okay. Do you understand the question, all right? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, so it's it's based on the uh, on chapter uh, seven, text forty-two. Yes, we're talking about the discriminatory power of women and how this statement may be abused. Okay, Maharaj. I'm just having a read and then I'll... What about Prabhu there? Is there a Prabhu there with you? Yes, yes, Maharaj. What do you feel, Prabhu? Yes. Yes, Maharaj. I'll read and then we'll have a discussion. Okay. You haven't read yet, no? Hare Krishna. She cannot uh, have managerial positions, maybe. Oh, Maharaj, you have joined our group. Yes, I've come to your group. I want to hear oh, your dis to... your discussion. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, Maharaj. Nice to meet you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, I'm Kamlangi here. I'm, come, I'm also a woman myself. I was thinking that we are naturally, we are soft-hearted and very compassionate. We always think of how others will feel like that. But then how to misinterpret it, uh, that's why I'm, uh, how, to, how people can misinterpret it, that's why I'm confused here now. <laughs> Actually, so I was, I was like, very emotional as well. <laughs> my thinking is that someone may say, correct me if I'm wrong, someone may say that because woman is very emotional, tends yeah. to be emotional, she cannot have a managerial position. She cannot maybe... Uh, 
manage uh, something like an office or a temple, uh, a temple commander, such things. Yes. So this is one, one way to misinterpret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah. Another, I say something that if that's okay, the same role she does in a family as a mother or as a wife and all, she runs a whole family uh, situation in the home from cooking to uh, educating the children and whatever it is, the household chores. There's also some kind of management, right? Some kind of? Management is kind of managing the, the household. So, yeah. The, yeah. So very hard to say for me also, cannot have management position, it's quite difficult to say that. I don't quite agree with that. Because most of the time, we women take over the household than the men. Generally, yeah, generally we take over. A good example in my case, I take over the whole household myself, then my husband. He leave it to me. <laughs> so now, the is quite tricky here. But doesn't your husband also give you advice sometimes? Doesn't he sometimes disagree? Oh, he sometimes he'll yes, agree? Yes, he does give advice. Sometimes. Yes, I ask him for advice. He gives advice. A very good advice he gives. Yeah. So in other words, we have to be supported as well. Whatever we are doing, we need some support also. Sometimes we can become too emotional and not be able to think properly. So that time where the husband comes and gives you the support or the right thinking to be in a moment of time. When you want to make a decision for something, or be upset for something for no reason, then you realize, oh yeah, it's not important at all, so petty, why am I so upset about it? That's the way you are supporting that in your management role also. That's where we lose our self, our composure, that moment becomes too emotional. Mm. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah. You know, sometimes we do say women are the weaker sex, right? But, uh, Women are generally considered the weaker sex. The weakness being that they're, you know, they have this, you know, sentiment, bodily affection, and kind-hearted, soft-hearted. Sometimes people will may take advantage of that soft-heartedness. Yes, exactly. You can take it possible that. Okay. I'll leave you now, and I'll just get back to the... Maharaj, can I close the rooms? Yes, let's close the rooms and we'll take feedback. It'll take 50 seconds. Uh, closing the rooms, after closing the rooms, it'll take one minute. Okay. So now we have 50 seconds. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, nice to have everyone back. Let's take some feedback. I'd like to hear, let's begin with the Madhiji. Let's hear a lady, first of all, tell us what is her opinion about this? How might this be, uh, how might this be abused or mis wrongly applied? One of the ladies would like to offer their contribution. What about Jai Radhe? Jai Radha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So in our discussion, what we uh, thought is um, Draupadi's um, view was uh, given a lot of importance by uh, Krishna and uh, the others, uh, and it 
was because of Draupadi's desire that uh, Ashwatthama was actually brought um, to uh, for uh, to the uh, palace for punishment in front of everyone. Um, but um, Krishna also respected uh, Draupadi's later desire not to punish Ashwatthama on account of her being a pure devotee of uh, Krishna and decided uh, not to punish him but uh, at the same time um, uh, understood that the discriminatory power of uh, women may not be as good as men and uh, uh, took a step where he um, did not really compromise on punish punishing Ashwatthama but at the same time um, he listened uh, or wanted the desire uh, wanted the desire of um, draupadi to be executed in in terms of not punishing ashwatthama yeah but you didn't really comment on this this point about the abuse of you know how it might be abused this nature of women to make judgments or to be be weak, a little soft-hearted in dealing with issues. You didn't get into that at all. You're just talking about the text. We want your opinion. The, the answer's not in the book. You know, we want to hear from you. Hmm? Maybe we can ask some other lady. Thank you so much. Can I just say, I don't think uh, you permit me? Yeah, yeah, your voice is not clear. Can, uh, can I just uh, say if you permit me? Hare Krishna? Can yeah. speak on? Yes. Uh, Maharaj, uh, actually a woman is very mild by nature. So when Ashwadhamma was brought to her, she was not able to uh, decide genuinely. You know, she, because of her mild nature, she said no, uh, he should not be killed. Whereas a man, he is uh, strong by nature, so he, he thinks rationally, more rationally than a woman. Like, we can give an example of Arjuna. Like, as a devotee, he was uh, soft-hearted and he didn't want to fight, but for, fight the battle. But when Krishna asked him, uh, ordered him to, uh, to fight, then he uh, judged rationally and then he fought. But you're not commenting on the question. You haven't given me a comment on the question about the nature of women and how they might be. Oh. Hare Krishna, can, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I, I have um, the answer as uh, a woman are regarded as less intelligent or weak. But it's not in the case with Draupadi, or we also see with Mother Sita or Mother Queen Kunti, uh, how courageous they are. So okay, so you you say that if if we if women are accepted as being soft-hearted, then we may think that women all women are weak. Yes. <clears throat> Weak or like less intelligent? Oh, oh, weak or less intelligent. Okay. So, yes. Uh, it also can be misinterpreted saying that uh, uh, women think more from the heart than from the mind. She doesn't use the intelligence or you know just relying on the emotions rather than intelligence. Um, and also, um, it can be misinterrupted to say like women can't be given any responsibility or a powerful position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so this is this is interesting. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is a kind of thing which might come up. We may think like that, and we may generalize that all women are sentimental and weak-hearted. We can't trust them, they just keep them at home, let them be housewives and have children. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, I, one more point I wish to share. Like, uh, because of this, the women are ill treated by men. And they are, uh, like by uh, saying abusive languages to them and by beating them, like they, uh, they feel that they are weak, so we can do anything with them. 
All right. Please not reply back. All right. Thank you. Women, women can be taken advantage of. We can do anything with them. They don't have any position. We don't need to listen to them. All right. So let's hear from some men. Marari Prabhu, can you give us your thought on this? Yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes. So, Prabhupada has mentioned like that, that the general, the women in general, they do have that tendency to be soft-hearted and they don't always show the right strength of discrimination in dealing with issues. They allow their own affections and feelings to influence judgments. All right? Maybe we'll just take one more comment from a man. Anybody like to offer anything? Yes, Maharaj, may I? All right, Prabhu. Um, Maharaj is a counterpoint, really, um, that whilst what has been discussed may be the essence of it all, but there is a counterpoint to this that uh, because me being a marriage counselor, by the way, I have sensed that many of the men are actually suffering because of, uh, unfortunately, the cases I'm dealing with, because the women have tried to take the position of the men. Uh, and and um, the man has had to become very subservient to the demands of the woman. So uh, I just want you to throw in a counterpoint to our discussion. <laughs> uh, yeah, this could be very uh, <laughs> topical, big, big issue. Very interesting. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. That's the man's side. One point from the man's side. Yes. Yeah, we don't have time now, Prabhu. I'm sorry, we'll just have to go on. And we we'll just have to go we'll from you another time because time is short. We have limited time and have still a bit more to go. Can we go ahead? Yes? Go ahead. Yeah, can someone read the quote? We should not give up our vision and discriminatory power just to be gentle. One must have good discriminatory power to judge a thing on its merit. We should not follow the mind nature of a woman and thereby accept that which is not genuine. All right. So Prabhupada talks about the mild nature of a woman. Well, that, that's a fortunate man who <laughs> has a woman with a mild nature, right? He's very lucky. Not all women have a mild nature. Okay, let's go ahead. All right. Oh, <laughs> we're going to just move in here into the beginning of the eighth, the eighth chapter, because in the next class we're going to we'll begin with the prayers of uh, Queen Kunti, but beginning the eighth chapter. Uh, can we have the the text? Oh. Anyway, what's happening is, after the uh, 
after the protection, the Ashv Ashv after the dealing with Ashvatthama, then after dealing with Ashvatthama, then of course Ashvatthama tries to throw another Brahmastra weapon. which also has to be counteracted by Lord Krishna. Oh, that comes at, actually, that comes after Queen Kunti's prayers, doesn't it? Let me see, I have to refresh my memory how the eighth chapter begins. Uh, chapter eight, text number one. One text number one. All right. Sutta Goswami, no. Thereafter the Pandavas, desiring to deliver water to the dead relatives who had desired it, went to the Ganges with Draupadi, and the ladies walked in front. Okay. Text 2. Having lamented over them, and sufficiently offered Ganges water, they bathed in the Ganges, whose water is sanctioned, sanctified due to being mixed with the dust of the lotus feet of the Lord. Wonderful. Go ahead. There sat the king of the Kurus, Maharaj Yudhisthira, along with his younger brothers, Dhritarashtra, Gangari, Kunti and Draupadi, all overwhelmed with grief. Lord Krishna was also there. Go ahead. Text 4. Mm. Citing the stringent laws of the Almighty, and their reactions upon, their li li upon living beings, Lord Sri Krishna and the Munis began to pacify those who were shocked and affected. So we could understand the situation, something of the situation, how painful it must have been for all of them, that they were there, so many of the relatives and family members have all been killed. Not only the sons of Draupadi, the sons of Dhritarashtra, and then Abhimanu, uh, Abhimanu, the son of Arjuna also. And so many thousands, millions of people all died in the battle of Kurukshetra. So the, the situation was overwhelming. And they're naturally feeling very despondent when you ever when we ever go to a, a funeral it's not a very uh, ecstatic event right it's very uh, thought provoking so reading text number five the clever Duryodhan and his party cunningly usurped the kingdom of Yudhisthira who had no enemy by the grace of the Lord the recovery was executed and the unscrupulous kings who joined with Duryodhan were killed by him. Others also died, their duration of life having decreased for their rough handling of the hair of Queen Draupadi. So because of the rough handling of the hair of Draupadi, all of these people had to die, all of these different kings, they were all removed in the battle of Kurukshetra. Lord Krishna does not allow anyone to mistreat his devotees, his pure devotees, like Draupadi. All right? So, we want to have a little, just with the time left, we want to, you to think about this protection in ISKCON. From the purport of verse number 5, in the glorious days, or before the advent of the age of Kali, the brahmanas, the cows, the women, the children, and the old men were given protection. Go ahead. The next slide. 
How Prabhupada's purport to 8.5 gives insight into his mission and that of ISKCON. Yes? There's a bit more. How effective have we implemented these guidelines in ISKCON? <laughs> it's a big topic, I know. But let's see. You know, you were all in groups, right? We had groups. We had groups of four people. Six, six, six. There were six groups of four people. So, who were the different people who were going to be protected? First of all, there were the women. Group one will take the women and analyze protection of the women. Group two will take the children and analyze the protection of the children and how we're doing in ISKCON. And then also we have the Brahmanas. Group three will consider the position of the Brahmanas. Group four will consider the old men. <laughs> All right? And we still have two more groups. Group five, you can take the women and group six, you can take the brahmanas. Is it clear? Can we go back to the question again? Padmasundari Maharaji? We need the question on the screen. How Prabhupada's purport gives insight into his mission and that of ISKCON. How effective, particularly the second part of the question, how effective have we implemented these guidelines in ISKCON? Well, we already made the groups, right? We had the groups earlier. No, that was again uh, recreated because they were in pairs. So I have to make the groups again. What happened? No, I'll do it again, not an issue. How, how much time they have? Well, we have five minutes left for the class. We don't have much time. <laughs> yes? Uh, we have not made a group for the cows. Oh, the cows. Okay, so group five. group five. Group five can be the women, group six can do the cows. Can you just quickly say who were there in group uh, room one? So I'll put you in the room. Room one. Who were there in room one for your first group assignment? You have to make it fast. We were there, Mataji, Mahamani and Mahatmati. And others? Mataji, Manipapal Dash was in room one. Okay. And we were in room one? We had Murari Prabhu also. Okay. And room two? Room two? Stiram Karnatara. Karnatara, okay. You have Stiram Karnatara. Stiram Karnatara. Okay. Vina Namadadas. Okay. Amala Manchidi. Okay, done. Room three. Repeat, tell me. Okay, next person. Anil. Okay. One more person. Room three. And also Mahavirupa. Anybody else in room three? Mahavirupa Prabhu, Sachitana Prabhu. Sachitanai Prabhu, okay, done. Room four. And Master Midas, um, Asad Prabhu, Viragopal Prabhu, and Dauji. Okay, thank you, Prabhu, done. Room five. Room five, who were there in room five? Rubanga Prabhu. Rasa Shetra Prabhu, 
Chandrika Mataji, uh, Kamalanki Mataji, and uh, Jayaradhi. Okay, done. Rest all are in room six. Okay, I'm just assigning all of you. Please join the rooms. I'm opening the rooms right now. There's no time. Please join the rooms. <laughs> I was Hare Krishna Prabhu. Actually, I said Murari Prabhu, but probably Padmasandir Mataji Hardy only. Yeah. Okay. Hey, man, the question. It's good to have you, Prabhu. <laughs> So, um, number one, what's number one? It's um, protection of women. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I guess we have a, we can have a brainstorm. Um, protection of women. So, um, I think I think again, you know, it's a big discussion, but we but we can start. I think we kind of got off to a slow start. I think we're so, ISKCON is so absorbed in the all important mission of preaching that I think to begin with, we, we, we may have overlooked these to one degree or another. in the Brahmana class of men's by proper uh, trainings. Yeah, so Mahaki Rupa Prabhu, you, you're taking notes, right? Okay, Prabhuji, I will, I will obey your instruction. <laughs> that's because you, that's because you're very good at it. So, uh, just, just, uh, what about the fact, so we're talking about protection of the Brahmanical culture, right? And I, and, and I think that's one was one of uh, Pupat's key uh, ideas in ISKCON was that So, so they have to maintain goshalas, then offering the meals, then what else? Sometimes there's go puja also. Yes. To know how to respect cows. Worship the power. How have we done in ISKCON? How, how have we done in ISKCON? Are you, do you think ISKCON has done pretty good in cow protection? Over here, yes. I know of there's one particular devotee who goes around and takes all the cows that are going to be killed, even if they can't give more milk or if they, even if they can't have more, uh, I mean, they can't reproduce, he takes them and saves them and keeps them in his Goshala oh. under the name of Iska. Oh, very nice. Protect them so that they're not slaughtered. Very nice. So at least in That's some... great service. That's in, in New Zealand or Australia? In Mauritius. Mauritius. In Mauritius. Oh, wonderful. So some places definitely things are good, not in every place. I saw a very ne negative article recently about the Goshala somewhere in Australia. Okay.
Good. I will leave you to it. Hmm. Maharaj, can I close the rooms? Yes, I think so. You have muted yourself, Maharaj. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh. Maharaj, can you hear me? Yes. Can I close the rooms? Yes, please. So everyone's back? Yes, Maharaj. All right, so our time is up now, but what we can do, you keep your uh, notes on this topic and to the next class we will begin with this discussion. I'll hear your feedback on these different points. But keep it brief. We don't want too much, you know, it's just a simple exercise. So we will stop here, I'm not going to go over time, I, I want to keep you late. I'm sure you have a lot to do. So we'll meet next weekend, next Saturday, right? Yes, Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank, thank you, Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Gorbekar Rinda Ki. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj.